you guessed it, often duplicated yet never reproduced. Welcome to the channel. Welcome to the show. Thank you so very much. It's time for the 31 Days of Halloween. We are covering a different horror movie every day in the month of October. That's right. We are celebrating the spirit of Halloween in horror movies. I love it. This is our second annual 31 Days of Halloween. You might have known it as uh, Spooktober uh, or 31 Days of Monsters. But whatever, however you do it, if you are watching a horror movie a day during October, I'm one of you, you're one of us, welcome. We are here together. And if and please feel free to share in the comment section what are your choices this 31 days. Indeed. Um, we started off this year we're doing as a theme i can we kind of figured it out over over the course of the show like last year uh we'll have a, a link to the to the playlist the complete playlist will be right here at the end of the show if you one need some inspiration and recommendations for your very own 31 days list or two want to check out the theme that i did last year which was heavy on vampire movies specifically with an emphasis on Dracula movies as well. Not all of them, but just a few choice ones. There are plenty more Dracula movies to get to. Seriously. I mean, the world can't get enough of, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know? So this year we're, we're doing slasher movies. That's our main emphasis. We'll be doing other movies here and there, but for the most part, we're doing, we're starting off with the Friday the 13th box set I got from Shout Factory slash Scream Factory. That's their uh, their imprint on uh, on horror movies. They call it Scream Factory. You see that down low? Yeah. This is a really good box set. Shout Factory is known for packing their Blu-rays and DVDs and their movies with special features and extras, bonus reels, Cutscenes, interviews, mini documentaries, um, and this does not disappoint. I mean, some of these movies are downright mediocre to, to, to kind of cringy, and we're getting to one which is down probably the most mediocre and the most cringy. And um, but there's a lot to talk about it, and, and you know, in hindsight here, uh, it's Friday the Thirteenth, Part Nine. Jason Goes to Hell, the final Friday. Haven't we heard final before in the Friday the 13th franchise? Oh, the alliteration. <laughs> we have. Way back in part four, we heard it was uh, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, a.k.a. yeah, part four. So it was, that was that was misleading, huh? Oh, yay. But this one is Jason Goes to Hell. Let's read from the wiki, because I love reading from wikis. Uh, directed by Alan Marcus. Screenplay by Jay Hoogley and Dean Laurie. Um, <clears throat> release date was August 13th of 1993. I watched the unrated cut, which was 90 minutes. And uh, it's the, ra the, the rated R cut is 88 minutes. Its budget was $3 million, and its box office overall was $15.9 million. So, you know, just... But also, Paramount Pictures sold the character rights to New Line Cinema. And uh, it's interesting because you, I hope you noticed the, the change in title here. Um... It does not say Friday the 13th, Part 9. We just know that because that's, you know, the order and the years have released and where it is in the story. But here it is. Paramount Pictures, who had released the previous eight Friday the 13th films, negotiated with New Line Cinema over the rights to the series. Ultimately, granted New Line rights to the Jason Voorhees character yet retained control 
of the Friday the 13th title, which they would come full circle back in uh, in 2009 with the um, with the remake, which we'll get to on <laughs> on Friday the 13th this week. <laughs> yeah. Huh? Um, New Line placed Cunningham's idea for the Freddy vs. Jason film on hold, prompting him to generate a different script to proceed that plot line. Um, Cunningham's original idea would later manifest in Freddy vs. Jason in 2003. Ten years after this. So yeah, what happens in this awful movie? This movie is terrible. I just want to say this is the worst ride of the 13th movie I've watched out of all of them. I except with the exception of I haven't seen Freddy vs. Jason, but I don't think it's as bad. Um and it finishes this new line trilogy of horror movies. We'll be we'll be covering Freddy vs. Jason. In about a week and a half. First thing we're going to do is we're going to watch the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. And then we're going to finish this double series, this double header of 80s slasher movies and their iconic killers. One with the mask, one with the glove. And the sense of humor and the one-liners. Totally, like, diametrically opposed foes to come together and face off in Freddy vs. Jason. New Line Cinema had had had, uh, had Freddy. Paramount had Jason Voorhees. Dimension Films had someone you may have heard called Pinhead. And the Xenobites of the Hellraiser series. So it's kind of like... It, it, it's Romantically, it's kind of like starting quarterbacks on different teams. You know, every uh, film studio had their own horror line. And had to have their own, t- you know... You know Major go-to killer, you know. <laughs> That's how I see it. That's how I'm making the call. Indeed. But um, Jason Goes to Hell for Final Friday is a 1993 American supernatural slasher film. Uh, the ninth installment of the Friday the 13th franchise and a sequel to Jason Takes Manhattan. Uh, Kane Hodder plays the role for the third consecutive time. It is the first film in the series to be distributed by New Line Cinema. New Line Cinema is relatively... It was founded in 1967, and um, it was an an independent film distribution company, and it got later acquired by Turner Broadcast Systems in 1994. Turner later merged with Time Warner, um, and in 1996, and New Line was merged with Warner Brothers Pictures in 2008. The house that Freddy built, due to the success of the Nightmare on Elm Street films, but however, their most successful property was their film adaptation of the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Um, you know the Peter Jackson movies, pretty much, and um. Yeah, they um, they did a lot of movies. I've I've grown up seeing the New Line Cinema logo, and uh, yeah, they did. They they also did the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movies in the nineteen nineties. And um, yeah, that's our just our little primer on New Line Cinema, set after the events of Jason Takes Manhattan. Okay, and this is where the film diverges from lore. And from continuity, and it puts a new spin on Jason Voorhees. What we've been asking this entire series so far: What is Jason Voorhees? Is he this? Was he the still living child who may have drowned in in camp in Lake Crystal, in Crystal Lake all those many years ago in 1957 at, at Camp Crystal Lake when you know his mother was the cook there? And those two fornicating teenagers who should have been watching him let him drown? Or is he just 
that grown-up kid who may have survived, who just lives in the forest, stalking his victims one by one. Ooh. Not a lot of... There's no... No still art? No... Movie uh, posters? Wow. You can We can see the transition then, I guess, between Paramount and New Line. Also, with those resources. There you go. They're making Jason burgers. Yeah. Um, he's got an interesting cast. They got Aaron Gray of TV's book Rogers and, and Silver Spoons and of uh, of The Guild uh, by Felicia Day. Aaron Gray is just a Wow, what a, she's a really good actress, and uh, it's so good to see her. And um, Stephen Williams of Twenty One Jump Street and of different um, uh, TV shows. You, you'll know Stephen Williams as soon as you see him. You might not know his name. He's an African American actor of color, uh, mustache, and he plays the bounty hunter Duke. And this thing just goes off the rails when it comes to the story of Friday the Thirteenth. I, I'm, yeah, I'm going to read, like I said, I'm reading this from the wiki. Um, set after the events of Jason Takes Manhattan, the film follows Jason's spirit as it possesses various people to continue his killing spree after his death. To resurrect himself, Jason must find and possess a member of his bloodline. But he also can be permanently killed by one of his surviving relatives using a magical dagger. <laughs> this movie is so bad. But we have Erin Gray who plays Jason's long lost sister. And what she has to do... I know it's alarming, huh? I live down the street from a firehouse. Come back safely, guys gals you know but Aaron Gray and that's Stephen Williams right there that's Stephen Williams yeah and that's Aaron Gray oh my car my, my car and sh her daughter is coming back to town to visit with her baby daughter so here you have your three, three generations of Voorhees the elder daughter doesn't know that she's a Voorhees the mother is going to confess to the daughter when she sees him about you know who they're really, what their their family's real name was. But she doesn't make it. She gets, she's one of Jason's first victims. But it's, it's it, her, you know, her corpse comes back to haunt us by Act Three. <laughs> and it, it get this is ridiculous. This movie is ridiculous. Um, it's. And it can totally changes like what we were talking about. What is Jason? So is Jason that adult version of the boy who may have drowned, who grew up alone and insane in the in in, in the forest of Crystal Lake region of what is which is set here canonically as Connecticut? Yeah, um, not Maine, not New Jersey, but Connecticut. I mean, yeah, I think I pay attention. Um, it was made for $3 million. It had a box office of 15.9. Um, and they wouldn't touch this character or property again until 2001. So this laid fallow for eight years. From 1993 to... 2001 when Jason X Jason 10 was released once again no, they can't use the Friday the 13th title and also the crossover is Freddy versus Jason that was released in 2003 and it does not have Friday the 13th in the title so this I, we could fairly say would be the new line trilogy that's what I'm going to call it and uh, the film was panned by critics and fans alike, criticizing its supernatural elements and the elimination of Jason Voorhees as a physical character. 
It was the second worst performing film in the series after Jason Takes Manhattan. And it is just terrible. You know, the, the opening, the cold open's pretty fun. I will say there's a Dan, uh, uh, you know, a woman and uh, who's, who gets T, we get our TNA. Um, and she's in Crystal Lake and she's bait for Jason because out springs Duke, the bounty hunter with a super arm to the teeth SWAT team. And they, they kind of blow him up, you know, and, uh, so they, they drag Jason's corpse back to the, um, to, to the morgue where the mortician who's performing the autopsy is possessed with a need to eat Jason's still beating heart, which then infects the mortician, the coroner, with Jason's spirit. So Jason leaves, walks out of the military installment on his own, killing everyone, coming out, and makes his way to Crystal Lake. And this inevitable confrontation with his bloodline. That's not enough of the movie to get a to get a warning or a strike. Let's just there we go. All right, leave it there. Yeah, I mean, last thing I want to do is get a strike for this masterpiece. Uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, it just and it's just, it's it's pretty bad. Um, it's pretty heavy on CGI effects. We'll get more of that in the next movie. But Jason X, Jason Jason Ten is actually quite fun, and I think should go down in history as a cult classic. But this movie, this was pretty bad. I barely remember seeing it if I even did on home video. In the nineties, I don't. I may have not have seen this one, to be honest with you. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember. Even like on late night cable. And um, and then we see Jason's spirit go from one man to another man and to another. And where he's finally, the body is so, you know, mangled that out pops a CGI kind of snaky lizardy thingy. Like, as you can see on the mask there, and inhabits the body of Aaron Gray's corpse, killed in Act 1. And um, out transforms that body, because it's part of his bloodline, into the full-on Kane Hodder Jason Voorhees with the mask on. And the same clothes he wore at the beginning of the movie. It's like, you know, she went. he went from a waitress uniform to the exact same outfit. So I'm not one of these guys that are just going to like, you know, it would have been more comical, I guess, if like he, he popped up, you know, looking like a beefy version, like a, like a, like a female bodybuilder wearing a blue and white, you know, checker waitress uniform. <laughs> but no, it was just... It, <laughs> It's 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 cinema magic, okay? Don't worry about don't think so hard about this stupid movie. Please, don't waste your time doing that. Um and by the end of it, it's like these hands come out of the ground and pull him back down to hell, where he belongs to be. Jason goes to hell, literally and figuratively. Uh and the and the franchise apparently went to hell too. Only for this like one movie. Because I will say that Jason X will be covering tomorrow, uh, Friday the 13th, Part 10. It's so bad, it is entertaining. Now, there's a good amount of practical effects in this. Um, and But it's just... Okay, I was starting to talk about this before at the beginning, about driving. Um, all right. If, I don't drive a car much. But I do know that... When you leave Massachusetts and drive into New York State, there's a tangible difference in the quality of the road that you're driving on. And so I got the same feeling, the same emotional feeling, this allegory, uh, you know, of driving into New York State, you know, from Massachusetts where the, the roads are, 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 you know, fresh blacktop, and nice and smooth. And then 
all of a sudden the road sounds different through your tires. <laughs> and the color is shifted into a gray worn kind of thing. You know, I just, it's, it's, it's unmistakable. And I get that same feeling between going from Paramount to New Line. And so we, we've handed off the character name and his rights, Jason Voorhees, to New Line. Uh, there were like 13 novelizations and a comic book series and video games made with Jason. And then this all gets wrapped up in 2003. And then as movie production house buys movie production house, this consolidation of properties and things and whatnots and in-betweens, by the end, um, we go back to the Friday the 13th name by, 20, by 2009. Indeed. Yeah. And this was just, it was a terrible movie. But it had some, it had some like really solid casting with, with, with Aaron Gray and, and Stephen Williams too, um, which I thought was really fun. Um and it just, but it is, it, it's a slasher movie. It tries to pay attention to the rules. With just a little bit of TNA, not much. And um, not like TNA is everything about a horror movie, but it goes a long way with me. I What am I going to say? Is it objectification? Is it use of male gaze? Sure, why not? It's, you know, I'm glad you noticed it. Yeah, that exists. And it happens, even with typical men and good guys and bad alike. You know, I I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to defend the past to to to, uh, to a postmodernist. You know, trying to make me feel bad about appreciating the female form. Like, oh wow, what a beautiful actress at a beautiful age to be taking such great principal photography. I mean, geez, you know, these films are made like 40 years ago. Hopefully, the actresses are you know poking their daughters in their ribs, but like, look, I look that good once too, honey. You know, something like that. Jeez, man, it doesn't have to. Be, everything has to be all negative. I grew up with uh, Rubens nudes and and, uh, and and Renaissance art and uh, and sculpture, man. There's just naked ladies everywhere, man. History is filled with naked ladies, and so are slasher films. And we've been covering the 31 days of Halloween. Today is day number nine. No, it's today no, it's day number eleven. It's day eleven. In the 31 days of Halloween. It is part 9. Of the Friday the 13th series. Showing off the full strength. Of. My Shout Factory. Scream Factory box set. Great stuff. This is a good purchase. It's going to make me really happy. And uh, this movie is dumb. You know, how was it as a movie? And what was the best. Death scene. In this movie. Oh Wow. Um, best death scene in this movie was, um, I'm just going to say, um, Erin Gray in Act 1 because it's traditional slasher movies, practical special effects, you know, stabby thing. Um, not this, like, giant tongue infection of Jason into a new host um and any un there were so so much unremarkable killings in this it was just it was underwhelming you know so i yeah the the best kill in this movie was early in the movie so there you go that was a mis a misstep there was no i don't think there was a money shot kind of kill you know the one big over the top kill you know or, or i'm not even remembering it cuz the rest of the movie was that bad. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Turn on those notifications. We're doing this at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern Daily through the month of October, the 31 days of Halloween. If you need your own some suggestions for some horror movies, check out my playlist from last year, including this year's. Um, it's it's one big uh, playlist for all of them. But I can make a few suggestions if you're doing this too and you need a recommendation. Yeah, check out the playlist and check out a few of those videos. See how far we've come. Thank you so very much. It's been Friday the 13th, Part 9, Jason Goes to Hell. That's right. The worst 
Friday the 13th movie in the series. Well, so far. I haven't seen the remake. <laughs> so, the jury's still out on that one. All right. Thank you so very much. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. And we will see you in that dark movie theater. <laughs>